hey there you awesome bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs. My name is Little Wolf, and welcome to my den. Go ahead and come on in, but please wipe your paws and take a seat by the fire. The cauldron is definitely bubbling now, so go ahead and make some coffee, tea, or hot chocolate. A friend of mine had hit me up on Discord and asked me if I would be willing to do a couple of videos on some different music. And at first I was a little worried about it because I thought he had wanted me to sing them. And I'm not really sure if anybody wants to hear this old pup sing. It's been a long time since I've done that. But he did he did tell me, no, I don't really want you to sing them. I would like you to go and talk about the history of a couple of songs. And that made me breathe a sigh of relief. And with music, it's definitely an interesting thing when you think about it. Because nowadays, when you hear a song written by someone you like, or even if you don't know who wrote the song or sang the song it's easy to jump onto google and type in the name of the song and you can find out who sang the song you can find out who played the guitar who played the drums who played the keyboard shoot you could probably find out whoever the roadie person was when they went to chicago in 1952 and so those kind of things are really easy to find out. But let's say we find a song from the mid 1800s. And then the paper trail gets a little weird because you will find different writings of people who heard the song while they were out at sea, while they were in a different trading camp, while they were just traveling along in a wagon train, or wherever. And that really intrigued me. I thought that's really kind of cool. Because there are lots of songs from around that time where people just take it for granted that it's a song. We all know it but we really don't know where they came from and so that's a really really awesome thing and a fun thing to dig into and I would really like to thank Chris Durham for having me do this and so Chris Chris hold on a moment a few moments later there we go, that's much better. So now, let's talk about our first song, which is playing in the background now. Thank you, Chris. The first song is Shenandoah. And I did find an interesting article from Ballad of America that talks just about this and it would be easy to go on to something like Wikipedia for this kind of information, but I never go things the easy way. Okay, so Shenandoah. There are a few melodies as recognizable as the American folk song Shenandoah. As with most folk songs, there are many different variations and versions, and it is impossible to determine the song's exact origin. It has commonly been sung as a sea shanty, though it's most likely originated with early French-Canadian fur traders. Variations of the song have been linked to riverboat men, cavalry men, mountain men, and soldiers on both sides of the Civil War. Some use names including Sally Brown, Polly Brown, Darby Doyle, Patty Doyle, or Dan O'Shea in place of the word Shenandoah. 
in summing up the beauty and appeal of the song. It's hard to top the writings of John and Alan Lummox in their book, Best Loved American Folk Songs. The melody has the rolling surge of freedom of a tall sweeping ship along before the trade wind. The sonorous successions of the long bells and liquid constants blend perfectly with the romantic air. The lines are called from the homeland to the sailor wandering far out across the seas. A call not from a sweetheart, a house, or even a town, but from the land itself, its rivers, and its familiar and loved hills. Shenandoah was one of the most popular shanties. Heaving songs such as this set an appropriate, manageable pace and inspired sailors to accomplish the task at hand, which could be quite long and rigorous. The song first appeared in writing as Shanador in the New Dominion Monthly in April 1876. The author, Captain Robert Chamblet, Adams indicated that he had first heard the song around 1850. W.B. Wall reprinted it in his 1910 book, Ships, Sea Songs, and Shanties Collected by W.B. Wall, Master Mariner. The lyrics tell a story of a canoeing voyager or fur trader who was in love with the daughter of a Native American chief. The earliest known version of the song likely originated with the French-Canadian voyagers who traded with Native Americans around the Great Lakes, starting in the 16th century. The voyagers gave weapons, tools, and money in exchange for animal furs, especially beaver pelts. They often sang while they paddled their canoes along the Mississippi River and its tributaries, including the Missouri, in the quest for furs. Most musicologists agree that the chief mentioned in Shenandoah is the Oneida Iroquois chief John Scanadoah. Scanadoah supported the English against the French in the Seven Year or the French and Indian War. Support for the English may be the reason that the chief forbade the love between his daughter and the French trader. If the story in this version of Shenandoah is true, and ferry boatmen carrying goods on the American rivers in the early 19th century may also sung versions of Shenandoah. Sailors on packet ships along the Mississippi River sang while they hauled in the anchor. Eventually. Sailors on American clipper ships carried the song around the world. And so, now you know a little bit more about this song. And it actually really is a good song. And I will definitely be putting some clips into the description of this where you can look up the music video for it and hear the words that I have listened to. And this song has really gotten into my heart. It is such a good and beautiful song. And I would like to thank Chris for playing the music in the background. And thank you for allowing me to talk about the history of this song. And we really need to start thinking more about our music that we listen to. Music is such an integral part throughout the history of the world. It brings back good memories, bad memories, happy memories, and so just sit back and listen to this song a few times if you want to, 
It's such an amazing song. And thank you again, Chris, for allowing me to talk about this. You're such a really cool dude. And to all the people listening here, if you're not subscribed to Chris Durham's music channel, please remedy that. He is an amazing guy. He plays amazing music. And he's really fun to watch. I highly recommend you listen to him. And once again, bipeds, it's time to go. I love all of you. Take care and be safe and be civil. Remember, we only have one planet, so let's try and share it. So for now, goodbye, you awesome bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs. Good night for now.